Hey everybody, I'm Shane Mason, and this is Mason Boys Outdoors, and today we're catching Spanish mackerel. Y'all come with me and we'll run the Pascagoula shoreline and see if we can't get some Spanish mackerel. I'm out here trying to catch Spanish mackerel, mainly because they took all my baits yesterday. I had a rip shad on yesterday. I was reeling it in and it just, my line just went limp. I mean, they just hit it that fast and cut it that fast. So I went and bought another one yesterday and put a wire leader on it. Let's see what we get. But I've heard all, all you need is something fast and flashy. I also have a croaker sitting out. Maybe we'll get something on him too. We got one, finally got one. Not sure what it, Spanish mackerel. That's what I've been after. That's what I thought they were. Come over here yesterday, um, speckled trout fishing. And these dudes cut me off all day. And one thing about Spanish mackerel is they're really bloody. So you want to cut right between their gills, that'll bleed them. You do that, you throw them right in the cooler and it'll bleed out, get all the blood out of the meat and such as that, and um, it'll stay nice and fresh. We managed to get one. I was, guess that's all right for the first time I ever went Spanish mackerel fishing in my life. We're about to go up to the house and clean and cook this rascal and see how they taste. Well guys, we got a situation. Yesterday I put my boat in and then I just drove it to the house last night and parked it and left my truck at the boat ramp. Well, I come fishing again this morning, but I don't have my truck keys and I don't have enough gas to get back to the house. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna sit here and fish in Yazoo Lake for flounder until Chastity brings me my truck keys. What I'll be using is a green sparkle beetle. About a 1 8 jig head. You want to fish them super duper slow. So you just throw it out there, let it sink all the way to the bottom, and just bump it. Bump, and then just let it sit. And if you feel any resistance, set the hook. I think I got a flounder. Oh, he's something. Yes, got a flounder. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's a good one. All right. Calm down. Calm down. First flat fish of the year. Love eating these things. They have to be 12 inches. This one's much more than that, so he's going in the box. The way I caught him, I just caught him on a sparkle beetle like I caught the trout yesterday. But with flounder, the trick is you gotta move it really, really slow. One bump at a time and let it sit for like at least three seconds between bumps. Hey guys, we're back here at the house. I'm gonna make this cleaning part super quick because I got people working on their houses on both sides of me. But there's one little thing you want to be sure and do when you clean Spanish mackerel. And I'll show you what it is in just a second. And you want to fillet them just like any other fish. Except you want to leave the skin on. So you want to cut way up into the head meat. Get down to the uh, rib bones. And just come straight down his backbone. They are very bloody and a very oily fish. And that's why I bled him when I caught him this morning. What you want to make sure of when you clean Spanish mackerel is there is a, a line of pin bones. You, I can feel it right there. It goes all the way up. And you just cut down one side of them and cut down the other side of them. There you go, Ruby. All right, we're here on the back porch and we're gonna grill this Spanish mackerel. I've already got the tin foil laid out, got it covered with Pam. And now I'm just gonna take this Spanish mackerel. I'm gonna lay it 
skin side down on the tin foil. And I'm gonna cover it with, with Tony's. If y'all have a good Spanish mackerel recipe, please let me know. So I just covered the Spanish mackerel with Tony seasoning. And now we're gonna put some Worcestershire on it. And I'm not gonna put a whole lot on it, just a little dribble dribble. So if y'all have a better recipe, uh, if y'all see where I'm going wrong, let me know. So let's see how it tastes. Here's our Spanish mackerel, and I'm gonna throw it on the grill just like that. Put that dude right there. It's at whoo, over 400 degrees. Let's cut that down. That won't take long to cook, will it? Okay, leave it on there for six minutes. It's been eight, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. I also said put garlic butter over the top of it when you're done. But we used all of our butter yesterday at, at the crab bowl. By the way, that black crab from the, uh, that black drum from the last video, my first run, I caught over 30 crabs in five pots baited with black drum. That's uh, a good bait. Here's our grilled Spanish mackerel. I put Tony's and Worcestershire on it, and let's see how it tastes. It's a lot of people don't eat Spanish mackerel. I've never eaten Spanish mackerel, but Spanish mackerel is plentiful out in the Gulf, and I and I hope that it is good. So let's give it a try. I mean, it it looks delicious. It's got good texture, kind of soft. So I just covered it with Tony's and and uh, Worcestershire sauce. That's delicious. I might not ever cook it any other way. On the grill for eight minutes. I had it like at 400 degrees. Probably don't need to be that high. But covered it with Tony's sprinkled some Worcestershire on it. I didn't soak it with Worcestershire, but I just drizzled it with Worcestershire. And that is it. In 10 minutes, I had this thing grilled out and it is delicious. Wow. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Always remember, catch a mess and leave the rest. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye, Ben. You hit my phone. Yeah.